Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, and today's puzzle is by Philip Newman. Now, we ne normally see Philip in the gas videos. He's always one of the, the gas giants who set the genuinely approachable Sudoku, but Philip is a notable um, theorist and um, Sudoku constructor in his own right, but he's done a lot of thinking about Sudoku and research even to kind of find minimal patterns and he's come up with another genius one here so <clears throat> he and some other people on discord were looking at the um looking at the puzzle simon did a few days ago which was to do with diagonal skyscraper constraints and if i was very smart um i would remember which constructor created the one? Oh, it was Blashirk. There we go. It was Blashirk. He created a puzzle, which was really rather brilliant, that, um, that Simon had to go out on the channel about with diagonal skyscrapers. What Philip has done, and this is literally unbelievable, is reduced the number of clues needed in this, with this constraint to four diagonal skyscraper clues. No given digits in the grid. Good grief, no. Anyway, he was working with it with somebody called Yuri, and um, they got it down to, first of all, six clues, and then Philip tried some more stuff, and he's got down, he found a five clue puzzle, which is unbelievably hard, apparently. That's not what I'm trying, it would seem. What I'm trying is a four clue diagonal skyscraper puzzle, and you know, hats off to Philip. He, he literally goes very deep into these things and we really respect that effort. And the puzzles are often just absolutely fascinating in their own right. You know, I always say that the, the thing that sets Fistamafell apart is he doesn't just come up with an interesting idea. He then works and works and works on it until the implementation is perfect. Philip is very like that too. So we are going to look at what we've got today in a moment. Um, I will go through the rules when we begin the puzzle. But first of all, do I first of all I apologize for nearly an hour, in fact maybe even over an hour yesterday. I hadn't put up a link to the puzzle and I sincerely apologize for that. I know a lot of people just want to play the puzzle. They don't want to listen to me waffling on and solving it. Or they want to have a go first and then they want to listen to me waffling on which is very kind of them, but um, the puzzle was posted late and I apologise, but it, it got up there in the end and if you came to my video yesterday an hour after it was posted, you didn't notice a problem. Um, now, what have we got uh, to mention? We've got, of course, we are still going on Crack and the Cryptic on Patreon, our new Sudoku hunt for this month. Um, also on Patreon this month, we've posted some of the solution videos to last month's Patreon reward, so they're all up there now. We've posted uh, my crossword solve, the Times Monthly Club Special, which is extremely difficult. But Cracking the Cryptic features six puzzles of differing styles and standards, and you're sure to enjoy some of them. Uh, the reports we've had back from everybody writing in are very, very good, I will say, and well done to the hundreds and hundreds of people who have solved it correctly already. Um, also, there's Sven Sudoku Pad, there's our merchandise, and all of our apps. We haven't done a diagonal skyscraper app, and that's because... And anyway, all of those things are on the links below the video. Um, diagonal skyscraper is something people are thinking about quite newly. It's not that Blashirks wasn't the first puzzle to feature it, but it was an excellent puzzle in that regard. Now, what are the rules? So, normal Sudoku rules apply. We're just going to put one to nine in every row, column, and box. Um, and on one of the... Okay, each number that you place into the grid represents the height of a building. So... If this clue was four up here, Philip has given us some examples, and I will try and explain how we would look at those digits on this diagonal in terms of seeing what the skyscraper clue would be. Clues outside the grid tell you how many buildings can be seen 
along the indicated diagonal when looking from that direction. So you have to imagine you're somebody standing here looking at buildings here. You'd see this three building in front of you. That's one building. You wouldn't see the one size building behind it because it's smaller. You'd see the four. I suppose it depends how close you stood to the three, but we'll assume you'll see any bigger building. You'd see the four. You wouldn't see the one, you would see the five, you would see the nine, you wouldn't see the two. So you would see four buildings. So the clue in that case would be a four outside the grid. Um, and the same would be true if the, um, if the run of buildings went like that. You would see the four, but not that four. You'd see that five, but not those. You'd see that six and that seven. You'd see four buildings. So that's how these clues work. And that's it. It's a very, very simple rule set. And there are only four clues in this crazy puzzle called Uptown, because I guess we're looking at the, the, the area of the city where all the skyscrapers are, um, which I presume in America is generally called Uptown. Now, let's have a go at this and see what we do. Uh, you can try it on the first link under the video, which I have put there today. And I am going to start now. Let's get cracking. So... I am never ashamed to do pencil marking. So let's look at this. There must be two degrees of freedom on a seven cell diagonal. Seven is obviously the maximum number you can get as a clue on a seven cell diagonal. And therefore every building on it can be seen. Therefore they must ascend. The story, by the way, is gonna be very different when we get to this six cell, um, this six clue on an eight cell diagonal because the fact that you can have hidden buildings means there are many fewer constraints than you would think of on a thermo or something. Now, I'm going to also mark this seven diagonal, because I think these seven clues have to be what it's all about. Well, I mean, there's nothing in this puzzle. I mean, it's, it's got to be completely linear. There's so few clues. Now, you might think that there's just two degrees of freedom everywhere with this, and how can we do anything? But there are some very nice things about this that I can see. So I think this is gonna come down to being a four and I'll try and explain how my brain is seeing that. So they can't both be the same number. So they can't both be one. So one of them's at least a two. I suppose the simpler way of looking at that is that one of these is at least a three. And in whichever one of these diagonals that appears, it's gonna stop this being a three. Even if one of them was a two and a four, it stops this being a three. So this now is four or five. And that, yes, okay, the way to look at that is we can take out four from those cells, five from those, because the degrees of freedom have got restricted, and sevens from those. And again, there is an eight and nine here. Let's not worry about the fact that one of those must be eight. Let's get straight to the five and six here. One of those is a five. And that means this can't be five anymore, given the rules. That has to be a four. Now we can take four out of those cells. Uh, three is the highest digit there. So these ones which are seen first are now one and two. I was gonna say one or two. Clearly we have both being used because of Sudoku rules. So that's a start. And now if I'm to mark this seven diagonal as well, I'm beginning to see how this can actually occur, this incredible puzzle. That is six or seven. So this is seven or eight, that's eight or nine. And here it is again, well that, it's even simpler actually in this, on this side of the grid, that's a seven, eight pair. And in the same box, you can't put another seven. So that's a six. Um, I'm gonna deal with that in a sec, no I'm not, I'm gonna deal with that first. That's now a five because of this order in which we need to see every building. That five makes this a six and makes this a four. And now there's all sorts of these, these lines of sight we can finish off. Three, two, one, seven, eight, nine. Look, that two's looking at that cell. So that's three, that's two, that's one by Sudoku, that's two. And we've got an eight looking at this, perfect. Isn't that gorgeous? And look at that, just like that. What are we, three and a half minutes in, and I have finished off all of the seven clues. 
So, now I can get to work on the sixth clue and then some classic Sudoku, he said, as though a Philip Newman puzzle. You see, actually, if the, if the sixth clue was straightforward and then it was ordinary classic Sudoku with no tricks, and believe me, Philip has tricks for classic Sudoku, then this puzzle's over already. Uh, and he would have posted it in, in gas, <laughs> I reckon. Oh, somebody warned me the other day not to, not to be heuristically... Um, making assumptions about setters and solving in that way and I, I shouldn't but let, I'm gonna highlight this diagonal because I don't want to keep dragging my cursor down it and missing so we need to see um, let's do some Sudoku if we can there's a seven there um, six seven five four never afraid to do a bit of Sudoku Six, seven, five. Ah, look at this cell. This sees five, six, seven, eight in the row, one, two in the column. That is three, four, or nine. But look at this diagonal. It can't be a nine, or that would be the highest possible building we could see after only three steps. We could never get to six. So that's three or four. Yeah, it would be good to pick off a few cells like that on the diagonal. So what about this one? Much less good. This sees 2, 5, 4 in the column, 3, 8, 9 in the row. That is 1, 6, or 7. But none of those are inimical to the 6 diagonal in the same way that that was. Um, because you could put a 1 here. There's no reason you couldn't. 6 or 7 is quite likely if it's a counting building. But 1 there could easily be a hidden building. So there'd be no problem with that. Actually, look at this cell. Yeah, this is it. This is good. Two, three, four, six, seven, five, all ruled out. This is one, eight, or nine, but I think eight and nine are not enough. Even eight there, one, two, three, could be the fourth building, but it would only allow one more building, a nine, to be seen in the diagonal. So that's not eight or nine, and therefore it is one. That's a sort of peculiar diagonal skyscraper-based naked single. Um, Eight is now in one of these cells. Two is in one of these. Now, that is a hidden building, definitely, on the skyscraper. We can only have one more hidden building because we need to see six of these eight buildings. So that can be a one. Let's just keep plugging away. at. Oh, that's a three by Sudoku. Oh, that's brilliant. This whole box is going to be done. That's now where eight must go. That's where two must go. And that's where nine must go. I am celebrating because two is another hidden building. So all of these other buildings, let, let's get rid of those yellows. All of the remaining yellows must count. They must be higher buildings seen down this diagonal. So that can't be a hidden one anymore. That's six or seven. This is seven, eight. I would write eight or nine, but this can't be an eight. So that's a nine. This is two or three, but it can't be a two. So we've begun perfectly there. Let, I'm going to get rid of the yellow colouring there as well because we've done those. All we need to do is ascend here and do some class. Oh, in fact, look, eight, sorry. That's looking at that. We've finished it. We've, we've finished all the skyscraper clues. Wow. I, okay, now I'm a bit concerned that this might be difficult. This is a naked single. Four, seven, eight, two, three. One, nine in the row, six in the box. I've spotted a five. And then these can't be one. In fact, one is placed in that box. Well, I hope this comes out nice and easy. Maybe it will. Maybe it will. Seven, eight, five, seven, eight. Um, there's a nine in one of those cells and one of those. Now, I did see some things in box three earlier. There's a two in one of those and an eight in one of those. I also now see there's a three up there and a seven up there. So this is four, five, or six. I mean, what is very special about this puzzle is that it will now disambiguate into a single, a single possible solution. And yet it only has those four clues. Normally, if you can get four clues, you know, just four clues to fit. Ah, this is a nine-one pair given given the ones and nines. Yes, that's very good. Okay. Um, normally, if you can do a puzzle, you can make a puzzle that can work 
with just four clues. Normally there are many solutions, or at least two, and symmetry often insists on that, but not this time, apparently. One is in one of those, so the one in column eight must be there. This is another naked five. I'm good at spotting naked fives today. Two, four, or that's two or four. That's two, four, or seven. Now this box, one, nine, one, nine, eight, seven, four. So that's two or five. That's three or six. Quite a lot of these are constrained. Nine, eight, six, seven. I'm expecting this to just keep going, and maybe that is rash. Yeah, that's seven or eight. This is the only place for nine in the column. Four, seven, or eight there. They can't be three, so one of those is. Don't want to pencil mark across boxes, but I might try and remember that. One, eight, seven, nine, nine, eight, six, seven, one, three. I don't like to pencil mark across boxes because I get confused with what the pencil mark means because it's so off, the corner mark so often means restricted to these places within the box that if I sometimes use it to mean something else, that feels a bit dangerous. Um, am I missing something or is this getting trickier now? Ah, oh, okay, I've done a good spot now. No, I haven't. It relied on that not possibly being three. I thought one of those was going to be three. No. And in fact, it was just nonsense. I thought I was going to X-wing threes, but I'm not. Um, I don't know what I am doing now, actually. This is difficult. That is... That can't be nine anymore. Right, so that's nine. Six or eight there. Three, six or eight there. That has fixed six and nine. Now what about six? It can't be there. That is now five or four based on the pencil marking I've done in this box. That, ooh, that's nearly the same, but it's four, five or seven. Ah, there's only one place for eight in this row, isn't there? Yes, eight, 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 there is. It's got to be there. Right, I can take out that corner mark. Where the fillet puzzle, I want to be careful with the corner marks and be removing them when I possibly can. Now, have I got a triple in this row, in this column? No. I haven't. But four is confined to one of these. That's interesting. That's an X-wing on fours. In in column seven and column four, I suppose. And that means four can't be in any of these cells, so it's in one of those two and not there. Is that that doesn't get anything else done, of course. Mm, weird. Okay. Um, fives in one of those two. Doesn't have to be in those. Wow, this this puzzle was going much quicker when I was doing the diagonal skyscrapers. That that has astonished me. Maybe it's my infirmity. Yes, it is. Look, one in this row. Oh, you see, I've got so focused on one in this box, I hadn't noticed one in the row. That's a 2-3 pair. 9 has sorted out the 1-9 there. Oh, maybe this was easy all along. I don't know. Um, one of those is definitely a 4. I already knew 4 was definitely one of those. I've got this 4x wing, didn't I? 1, 8, 7, 3, 6, 2. What about 6? No, not very useful. Seven is in one of those. Ah, this is weird. Ah, earlier I said I was going to try and remember that three was in one of these cells in column three. In column seven, three's in one of those. 
Now, that, there can only be, this is, oh, this is called a skyscraper. I don't know if it's going to do anything, but I'm interested in it because, yeah, it does do something. Let me just colour those. In fact, let me colour these differently. So in column three and column seven, three is confined to those two cells. Only a maximum of one of them in row six can be a three. So at least one of these purple cells, possibly both of them, can be a three. And that, given that they see all of these blue cells, like both of those see those two cells, both of those see those two cells. None of these blue cells can be a three. Now that one couldn't have been anyway, but the others could have been. So there's no three in the corner here. And that's quite interesting because it means that if these can't be a three, we've already pencil marked that can't be a three. The three in box seven is in one of those two cells. And that's kind of just going to prove that the three can't be over here. But I think three in box nine has to be in one of those two. Since it has to be in one of those two in box six, that's going to use up the threes in column seven and nine. The three up here is going to have to be in column eight and not in the corner. No three in the corner in this puzzle because it's just too clever for that. Um, now, has that helped? How are we doing on threes? Hasn't fully, hasn't placed them all. We've got threes in these possible positions. There's still three positions in box four, which is the surprise. Yeah, I, I can't finish them off, but I was able to use that skyscraper. Um, that's annoying that I can't do anything more with that, though. Ah, oh, this puzzle! It is very surprising that I couldn't do any more. Five has to be in one of those two cells. I haven't pencil marked that. It means five's in one of those two. Not that. Oh, I mean, I could. No. It's going to try and skyscraper those positions. It it really doesn't work as well when when they're not going into the same box. I mean, those two cells do see two cells in the grid, but they already can't contain five, so it's not that interesting. But I'm now on the lookout for the, I mean, it's ironic that in a diagonal skyscraper puzzle, we should be looking for ordinary classic style skyscrapers. Oh, ah, eight is in one of these two cells as well. So that is now a three, eight pair. Ah, and that means it doesn't contain four, which must be here because of the X wing we did on fours. This is extraordinary. We're having to combine two X wings. No, I don't know. Eight was just an ordinary Sudoku play. One X-Wing with a skyscraper. It's not that extraordinary. Right, four in box one is now in the corner. One of those ha has always been definitely a four. Three, one, nine, eight, four. That is... I don't know. Come on. Five, six pair over here. This is... Oh, we could still get a two in the corner. Maybe the puzzle isn't. Maybe the puzzle is clever enough to be this hard and still allow it. Now, is there some digit missing up here? Seven has to be in one of those two. Right, down here is where we got this three, eight pair. We've got two, seven and six to place. Six is in one of these cells. It still hasn't given up. This is weird now. I mean, it's just classic Sudoku, and I'm struggling like a beast in a net. That is two, five, or six. Maybe I'm still going to have to find... It's probably just ordinary, but maybe I'm still going to have to find another skyscraper of some sort. 
or similar. Maybe it's another technique, a Y-wing still to come. And I mean, often these, these situations can be resolved by one of two possibilities. Oh, look, sevens in column one are there or there. Yes. Well, it, it's going to get at least one number out of a cell. Right. I'm going to highlight all these green. So where is seven in column one in one of the green cells? Where is seven in column six in one of the green cells? Only a maximum of one of those two can be a seven. So at least one of these is a seven. Now, what do they both see? Well, they both see that cell, which I'm therefore going to pencil mark now as five or six. But they also both see this cell, which has got a seven in at the moment. Oh, don't tell me that taking that out doesn't fix this. Yes, it does. Now the only place for seven in this row is in green. So that is a seven. This one isn't. Oh, sorry. Um, but can that be a seven? One of these two is a seven, and one of them is also a two, so that's a two seven pair. And this is now six in the corner. That's not a six. This is a two three five triple. That's an eight. This is three. I think this is working now. Six, eight, five, two, six. So that was another skyscraper. I'd be fascinated to know if that was necessary because it's brilliant. Ah, oh, this is. This is a super puzzle. Five there. This can't do that seven, eight yet. Five, seven, nine. That's not a five. Got two, three, four. This is known in this column. It's a two. That's very helpful. Five there. That's four. That's three. We didn't get a three in the corner. The puzzle is too clever for us. And I literally have that, oops, seven. I have that feeling that the puzzle has been a bit too clever for me. But it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant, but I am finishing it now. Two, five, and a three to finish with. There we go, what a lovely puzzle. What a brilliant discovery. I mean, Philip has characterized this as a discovery, but as I was saying before, we know how hard he works in his lab, in his Sudoku lab, cooking up these extraordinary finds and making them into lovely puzzles. And he's literally an evil genius at that. So thanks for your contributions, Philip. They are really much appreciated. Thank you for watching, as always. Hope to see you again soon on the channel. Bye for now.